All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and in today's episode, we've got some crypto news, some good stuff, and some bad stuff. There are some nice Bitcoin charts I want to show you, and one that I don't really understand. So it sounds cool, but I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really get it. So I'm hoping someone can can check this out for me and uh, and explain it to me in the comments. Got some stock market talk I want to go over. Market breadth observation that I made yesterday and posted to Twitter. So I want to show you that, and then we'll do some uh, charts, TA, live trades, all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something you'll be interested in, sit back, relax, hit the like button, and let's get into this. Starting off, okay, the UK self-proclaimed Bitcoin creator, Craig Wright, aka Fake Toshi, has lost his Bitcoin copyright claim in UK court. So no surprises there. Another big L for poor Craig, unfortunately. Over in Turkey, Turkey's largest exchange has partnered with local nonprofits to enable global Bitcoin donations for earthquake victims. So again, I'd love to see this. And Bitcoin, as I said in yesterday or the day before's video, Bitcoin's actually far better suited for use in things like sending aid. The reason for this is it's permissionless, it's borderless, and it only takes 10 minutes or less. Sending fiat means it's got to be exchanged via different international banks. There's forex exchange things that need to be taken into account. Bitcoin is just far superior as a form of money. And this is kind of evidenced using this real life example where Bitcoin is being used to provide aid for earthquake victims. So I love to see this and it's a great illustration of how Bitcoin truly is superior money. Over in Germany, German banks are now moving into Bitcoin. Let me just say that again. German banks are now moving into Bitcoin. Deutsche Bank is making strategic investment in ETF and market maker companies. Decker Bank is going to offer Bitcoin to 500 plus institutional clients. And the institutional funds are allowed to hold up to 20% in Bitcoin. 20%. The on-ramps are ready and you know what comes next. You know what happens when big banks start to move large sums of money into something that only has around a $400 billion market cap. So from the good news to the not so good news, Brian Armstrong here, who is the co-founder and CEO at Coinbase, says that he is hearing rumors the SEC would like to get rid of crypto staking in the US for retail customers. He says he hopes that's not the case as he believe it would be a terrible path for the US if that was allowed to happen. He says, staking is really important innovation in crypto. It allows users to participate directly by running open crypto networks. Staking brings many positive improvements to the space, including scalability, increased security and reduced carbon footprints. He also says we need to make sure that new technologies are encouraged to grow in the US and not stifled by the lack of clear rules. When it comes to financial services and Web3, it's a matter of national security that these capabilities be built out in the US. Regulation by enforcement does not work. It encourages companies to operate offshore, which is exactly what happened with FTX. And of course, we know what happened thereafter. Hopefully, we can work through this together to publish a clear set of rules for the industry and come up with a sensible solution to protect consumers whilst preserving innovation and national security interests in the United States. So the SEC is, of course, prone to crossing the boundary to overstepping its mark and doing all of this under the guise of protecting investors when it tends to do the exact opposite and cause much more harm to the smaller investors than it does to the larger ones. So obviously this news is not great if you are the sort of person that likes to stake crypto in the US. From Bitcoin and crypto news to Bitcoin and crypto charts now, the two day RSI of Bitcoin is showing that it has just crossed above this threshold, as you can see here. And historically, whenever we did this in the past, very, very good things happened to the price of Bitcoin walking forward. And so this is the chart that I don't understand. You remember at the start of this episode, I said, as a chart that I don't really understand, I hope somebody can help explain to me. This is it. So let me read you this first, okay? If this dollar slash Bitcoin cycle relationship holds, then Bitcoin will reach a new all-time high in six months. So that sounds really good. Of course, this is in line with my thinking the whole time that we're gonna have a very, 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 early peak in this four-year cycle and then spend the remaining three plus years in a secular bear market, Bitcoin's first true secular bear market. So I'm very interested in this. But I'll be honest, looking at this chart here, I don't know how he reaches this conclusion. So that's where I wanted to point at this chart and say, this is the chart that I don't really understand. Definitely sounds nice that we could be at all-time high in six months. Definitely fits my working thesis and expectation that we are undergoing a blow-off top or a melt-up whilst we're in this Goldilocks zone between disinflation and deflation. All of this sounds quite feasible to me. However, just from looking at this chart, I don't know if I'm stupid or if it's complicated or if there's some stuff missing, but I just simply cannot understand how he arrives at this conclusion from this chart. So if you can figure this out, please could you throw it down in the comments and let me know. I'd be really, really interested to try to understand this better. Something I do understand though is Bitcoin is trading above the long-term holder cost basis, as you can see here. 
as we continue to hold and trade above the long-term holder cost basis, we can expect very good things to happen for the price of Bitcoin over the coming weeks and months. So from Bitcoin over to the stock market, look, you can't make this up. Bonds at the moment are trading like the Fed didn't pivot. Commodities are trading like the Fed did pivot. Stocks are trading like the Fed is unsure. The housing market is moving like lower rates are coming in the near term. And the US dollar is trading like higher rates are coming in the near future. Markets are all over the place. And not only that, but did you notice, Powell said QT for a couple of years <laughs> and no, nobody cared. Nobody even flinched. The markets continue to rally. Risk continues to come on. Yields and the dollar, I believe, are about to roll over and make their next leg down in the near future. Of course, that remains to be seen. But as per yesterday's video, Powell has lost all credibility. The markets no longer care and likely risk is about to come on and trap all these bears offside. Something that evidences this, okay, is I posted this thread yesterday. Look, here's a short thread on my observations of US equities and market breadth slash participation. So if I click straight into this chart, okay, this green band down the bottom is, the bottom of this green band is 60% and the top of it is 70% market participation. So said another way, on top, we've got the NASDAQ chart and this orange line chart below is the percentage of stocks within the NASDAQ that are currently trading above their 200 day moving average. And what I showed here was that whilst the market breadth, the orange line, whilst the number of stocks trading above their 200 day moving average uses the bottom of this green band as support, i.e. comes down and bounces off of it and remains above 60 to 70%, the NASDAQ trades up. Once market participation breaks down from this green band and flips it into resistance, the stock market tends to plunge. The index tends to plunge with it. Then as you can see, as we then flip the green band on the market breadth from resistance to support and start to trade above it, really good things happen to the stock market. Then again, as we break down below it and it becomes resistance, bad things happen for the stock market. As we then flip it back into support and continue to trade above it, very good things happen for the market. And these are the conditions that we currently have today. As you can see here, we are just about working on flipping this green band back into support and starting to what I believe will be trend and trade above it. If this is the case, then what you will see is the NASDAQ rally significantly. And so here's the S&P 500. And what you'll notice is it's the exact same deal. Lose this green band between 60 and 70% participation for the S&P 500 stocks trading above their 200 day moving average. And what you see is bad things happen to the stock market. Flip that back into support and start to trade above it and good things happen. And you can see again for the S&P 500, same as the NASDAQ. We are just about to flip this bull market support band, this 60 to 70% participation rate in to support. And whenever this has happened historically, good things have happened for the stock market. It's a very similar look for the Dow Jones. Okay, very, very similar look. And again, we are looking, having lost this here at the top and traded below the 60 to 70% participation range, we are now looking to flip this into support and start to trade above it. If this is going to continue, then we can expect higher stock prices over the coming weeks. This is also, in my opinion, a very bullish look. And the reason for this is quite simple. If we had the top three or four or 10 companies in these indexes carrying the index higher, that would of course be very misleading because the majority of the stocks would not be participating in the rally. But that is not what we see. We see 70% of Dow Jones stocks currently trading up, trending above their 200 day moving average. We see 71% of S&P 500 stocks trending up above their 200 day moving average. And we see almost 72% of the NASDAQ stocks trading above their 200 day moving average. So things continue to look constructive as far as I can tell. Remember, whilst everyone keeps overlaying fractals from 2001 and 2008 to the S&P 500, what about this 1960s to 1980s fractal, as you can see here? If this was to repeat, we would be at all-time highs in absolutely no time. And of course, with all the bearish sentiment out there, I believe the path of most pain is higher, as I've been saying over and over again. Lastly, before we move into some charts, after record outflows of foreign investment in the US stock market, money is finally returning to the US from overseas, as you can see here. The only time that this didn't lead to higher stock market prices was the 2008 great financial crisis. And so hopping into some charts, here's the dollar, okay? The dollar, is it going to rocket higher is this going to turn out to be like a bull flag that resolves to the upside are we going to be targeting 105 and change or is this thing going to roll over and roll over sharply i think it's likely to roll over and roll over sharply but of course i have no idea we just take it one day at a time it's interesting for me to see the yields coming off rejected at resistance doesn't mean it couldn't pop higher 
But this is the look that I've been calling for. This is what I expected to see. Yields get rejected at resistance and roll over. Two-year yield could be a bull flag or it could be about to roll over and come lower. Gold and silver, we're still sitting on the side, patiently waiting to see if we can get one of these setups. And here's silver. So again, we're just kind of waiting to see if we can get one of these falling wedges set up and then we'll look to long the breakout if we can get it. The FTSE 100 continues to push higher. So again, not really a bear market rally look at all, is it? It continues to just make new highs. So happy days there, long and strong continue to push. The VIX, I wanted to show you something that's potentially a little bit controversial here on the VIX. I was thinking about this earlier. So I have to first of all, take a couple of steps back. This red trend line, okay, it started life looking a bit like this. And then we wicked it and I moved the trend line to the top of the wick and it did while. And then we wicked it a couple more times and I moved it over and we've kind of done it again. And I was thinking, do we move this trend line over here? But then we only have a couple of touches now. And so it doesn't really fit very well. And so I was thinking about this. And first of all, I know what some people are going to be thinking. Some people are going to be thinking, you can't keep moving the trend lines. You can't keep moving the trend lines. Well, yes, I can. It's my strategy. I could do whatever I want. The other thing is TA. Technical analysis trading is a form of art, okay? Don't let anyone ever tell you how to paint. You do you. If, if you like to move the trend lines, you can move the trend lines. And that's exactly what I'm going to continue to do. This is exactly how I always have traded and it always has worked fine for me. However, it's important to point out that the reason moving the trend line works is because it's about finding the area that the market is respecting. It's also worth pointing out here that a lot of people don't like diagonal trend lines for this reason. I would personally argue there's nothing wrong with diagonal trend lines. You just have to know how to use them. I think it's all about finding the level the market is respecting. I was playing around with this this morning and I think the market was actually respecting this level pretty well here. And I think since then we've been setting this new trend line that sits much more nicely in here, right? This new purple trend line seems to encompass the most amount of touches. Yes, we wicked it yesterday and we closed immediately back below it, but I don't like the idea of having this here where it's kind of showing only one or two touches. And I also don't like the idea of where here, where it connects a bunch of touches, but now we've got this weird sort of waddled out sideways breakout. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this red trend line. I don't really think we need that anymore. And I think my focus is gonna be on this purple trend line. So if you've got a problem with that, then I understand. But like I said earlier, trading and TA, a lot of it is an art form and don't ever let anyone tell you the right or the wrong way to paint. So this is how I see it. This is what I'm gonna be trading from now for the foreseeable future with the VIX. Ultimately, it doesn't change much. Get above this purple trend line and it'll be time to put a hedge on. It'll be time to manage the risk. But all the while we're contained underneath this, I do expect this to resolve to the downside. Hopping into the S&P 500, you can see right here, we are right into trend line support. So kind of penanting here before we're gonna make a decision, aren't we? We've got this kind of um, this squeezing situation occurring. So we'll get an answer in a couple of days. We'll find out which way that breaks. Still kind of keeping an eye on this cycle count. It seems to me like the most obvious thing here would be to accept this green count and reject the blue one. But that, of course, remains to be seen. I'll give it a couple more days and we'll get our answer. NASDAQ still looks pretty good, doesn't it? Still trending up. So is this a bull flag? Are we about to break to the upside of that? I would think so. But of course, anyone's guess is as good as mine. Here's the Dow Jones, still in no man's land, still sideways. So waiting to see what happens here. If we get a break above this, I think I'm going to add a position, a break above this red line here, because this has been so much time sat around doing nothing that once it actually breaks out, I believe it will go really, really quickly. So I'm going to add a position as we break out here and I'll move the stop loss from here somewhere higher up, probably to about there. So that's my plan, called out well ahead of time. Blockchain stocks continue to do okay. A little bit of a pullback, more than expected. Here's MicroStrategy, same sort of deal. Here's Riot, also the same sort of deal. And here is Marathon, again, same sort of deal. So not much to say about that. Tesla continues to move higher, over 200 now. So I love to see that long and strong continue to push. Apple stock continues to shoot up, although no position from me. This was called out well ahead of time as a trade idea though. Bitcoin looks to be rolling over. So is this going to have one final push higher or... If, we, if this continues, if we continue to round, then I would say that that was likely the cycle top for this cycle, this 60 day cycle. And we'll be looking to drop into a cycle low, which is due around the end of this month. So is something like this about to take place? Quite possibly. I think this would definitely trap an awful lot of shorts. I think a lot of people would be sat here that missed this entire 40% move from the lows. I think a lot of people would be seeing this unfold What's his name? Uh, Capo, Il Capo of crypto. I bet he'll be coming out going, told you it was a bull trap, told you it was a bull trap. And then all the shorts will, of course, pile in on this leg down into this cycle low, and then we'll explode higher. And all of those shorts will get scorched. So maybe that's what's happening. I would say that's the most likely path if we don't start to push up and make new highs in the very near future. So if we haven't made a new high by, let's say, Sunday this week, then I would expect that the path of most probability is this drop into this cycle low at the end of this month. Of course, 
the blockchain stocks will follow this and so will ethereum xrp is still doing a whole heap of nothing isn't it it's still trading sideways so i'm close to cutting this trade it's just spent way too much time underneath this red line so if we don't get back above 40 cents pretty soon then i'll cut this trade and then just sort of re-enter it as we break out above that matic continues to press up i like what i'm seeing from matic above this local high cluster here so matic is being a leader continues to be a leader so nothing to do apart from let it lead zcash kind of lagging a little bit but that's absolutely fine and then lastly geo geo still chopping around stops already been moved up to here so getting a bit bored of holding this but nothing really more i can do apart from wait and see if it waddles out we'll add a position on a break of this box as i keep saying over and over again so expect me to tell you that happens if we break out and xlc is pulling right back into support so lose this purple trend line and i'll probably exit this trade and wait to reassess maybe by ball flag breakout next time we go higher if we do um if we can continue to hold above this purple upper slope and support line and do something like this then of course i'll continue to push that long for xlc so that's the charts that's the analysis that is today's episode if anyone knows how to interpret that bitcoin chart i showed you at the start of this video or near the start of this video please throw it down in the comments and let me know if you have anything else to say throw it down in the comments too Drop a like if you appreciate the video and the work today, or if you found value. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications on if you want to continue to get all these updates for free trade setups called out well ahead of time. And I'll show you every win, every loss, every mistake, every modification I make to all of my trades, whilst I continue to try to uphold the highest possible standard of YouTube traders on this platform. In the meantime, all the best from me. Take care. Cheers. Bye.